So while I'm out here, we can talk about the beta and how it worked for me off-road at Hatfield McCoy. It's a 2018 model year. I did quite a bit of research before I decided on purchasing this thing. I was looking at the KTMs, the Huskies, basically the same, and I ultimately liked the bang for buck factor with the Beta. Uh, you know, it came standard with, uh, or excuse me, stock with FMF pipe and silencer. Uh, let me unhook the camera here, that way I can give you guys a little walk through the good stuff. So, but yeah, FMF pipe silencer. Well, silencer, pipe, I put the hand guards on, must for, I mean, honestly, it should, I think the KTMs might come with some shitty stock ones, but uh, these are Psycho full wraps, I have a video of me putting these on, um, They. I took a few spills at Hatfield, so they definitely were a good investment, anybody that uh, uh, rides off-road needs to have them, if you're going to do anything serious. So let's see what else stock frame sliders. Uh, it comes with a nice trail computer, although I'll get to the con about that here in a second. There's a mapping switch that um, kind of softens the power delivery if you put it in the you know the rain cloud, the sad rain cloud mode, and then the little sun here is basically full blast. Uh, electric start, obviously hydraulic clutch, very nice. Uh, one of the best parts about this bike, I think, is the fact that it, it has oil injection. And I know a lot of people are against that. Um, I've personally, growing up as a kid, I've, you know, I've had snowmobiles and been around people that have used oil injection and never had problems with it. But you, um, you, pit, you hit this button on the side, pull off the seat, <clears throat> and let me... Get you a little closer here, and you can see there's an oil tank right here. I wired this for um, a battery tender. Um, nice battery. I think this is a lithium ion battery, so it's nice and light. <clears throat> um, the suspension I feel like is better, much better than the X Trainer, <clears throat> which is a smaller frame, a little bit smaller version of this. It's maybe built more for extreme trial riding, or excuse me, trail riding. Sorry, I'm closing the <clears throat> garage door. It's getting a little chilly. <clears throat> Seat goes back on fairly easy. You line up the little um, spots in the bottom and then slide it up and over and then once you get the seat close to the mechanism you kind of just give it a little a little smack here and it, it goes on pretty easy built-in uh, grab handles here composite subframe no tool needed to get to the air filter most enduro bikes have that nowadays obviously kickstand it's a uh, real nice bike. Um, the I don't know if not maybe people don't know this, but I think this is kind of nice. The power valve right here uh, has adjustment. So if you back this Allen out, I think it's a six millimeter or something or four millimeter. I don't know. I forget. It, there, there's a spot underneath the seat that has the tool, so you can kind of. You know, if you pull up to a nasty hill climb or something, think you need more more balls, you can pop the seat off, adjust the power valve with the thing running, put everything away, and hammer it. But if you back this flush, that's like full tilt-a-whirl. I have it in, I think, a turn and a half, and it mellows the delivery a little bit. Um, not a lot. I mean, this bike still has a lot of power, which uh, you're definitely going to need on big hills and stuff. But I think that's pretty cool. Little touches like uh, the screw here that allows you to bleed the uh, air out of your radiators. I think that's nice. Another nice little touch here how the radiator shroud has a, you know, a scallop in it or whatever you want to call it so you can get to the um, 
radiator cap easier I thought that was nice uh, what else I added I added the this enduro engineering um, case saver I, I feel like these are an absolute must if you're gonna ride off-road mud is just gonna collect in the stock one so you might as well get rid of it and put something good in uh, stock v-force reed cage I mean that's I don't even know how much those are if you had to buy them at least 200 bucks I think uh, I, I don't know off the top of my head uh, skid plates better than nothing it's plastic so you don't feel the vibrations but it's not probably the best if you're gonna be bashing rocks and stuff like that I wouldn't, wouldn't recommend keeping it on here uh, let's see I probably should talk about cons um, so fitment issues this I don't like I feel like the this part of the fender maybe needs to be adjusted I really didn't take the time to mess with maybe un, unscrewing this and seeing if it lined up I didn't have a problem off-road this didn't this didn't fall off or anything see your fitment issues talked about that uh, the seat is an absolute rock uh, it, terrible terrible seat I, and I know what you're thinking I'm gonna be standing most of the time yeah you'll probably stand a lot while you ride I know I did but you're gonna want to sit down on some of the easy stuff to take a break and this seat is terrible uh, seat concepts makes some really nice aftermarket seats I encourage you to look at that they're not cheap but you know you get what you pay for it's they're they're nice let's see cons what else um, I don't like that there's no back disc brake protector I guess that's not a huge deal but I mean even a little piece of plastic I feel like would be helpful uh, the, the big one for me is the the computer here uh, I, I think stock from the factory I don't I don't think you can see, yeah you definitely can well I don't know maybe you can see it in there so there's these Phillips screws um, like machine screws that go in to the uh, back of this housing I might have a picture of it I'll, I'll flop it up on the screen here so you can take a look at it but the these bolts were um, or screws were tightened too much from the factory and it ended up making the standoffs of these brass standoffs that uh, are inside it pull out they cracked so I had to use uh, two-part epoxy to fix that and I called my beta dealer and supposedly they're going to talk to beta and get me apart that's been like five weeks now so I'm kind of getting pissed about that I mean it's fixed and it seems to be fine I mean like I said I went to Hatfield I crashed this thing a few times and it's fine it's it's on here it's not you know falling off or anything but I, I still if, if I can get a replacement one that's that's right and doesn't have cracks on it you know on the back I'd like to get it so that's probably my biggest con with this thing so far I uh, what else so the oil injection system the light comes on really early you'll get a red light and it will there's like a sensor in there and it kind of flashes at you depending on how low your oil levels are it comes on super early like I want to say I only put maybe 30 miles on and the light was already on and I wasn't really hammering stuff too hard so you'll want to not freak out when that happens I, I thought that there was some something happened I'm like oh great there's something going on uh, with a sensor now I'll have to look at that and it turns out it was just the oil level being kind of low the uh, the oil tank too if you have the bike on the kickstand and you're filling it you want to get it straight again upright to get some of the air out of it I feel like you can get even more oil in it uh, that, there's really not a lot of cons to this thing I mean it's really a nice bike um, I'm trying to think of anything else I hate about it yeah I get I mean really the stock the stock tire this Michelin I, I'm not too thrilled about the um, the the spacing of the lugs on here I feel like would work pretty good in soft terrain but hard terrain it, it didn't seem to want to hook up really good of course then we got a lot of rain at Hatfield 
and the tire seemed to be a little bit better but on snotty rocks and stuff it, it didn't really hook up well so I'm I'm gonna look into getting something a little bit better so let me let me talk about uh, some of the other things with this bike that you know I, I personally really like uh, the you know, it's 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 hard to explain you just kind of have to either find somebody that has one or you need to um, I guess just give it a chance and and ride the bike but the the seating position what even when you're sitting and when you're you're standing um, it feels really good it, it reminds me of some of the old steel framed CRs just like comfortable easy to move around on uh, you know you want that kind of stuff because you're constantly changing lines off-road the suspension out of the box was great I didn't mess with the clickers too much I want to say I softened up the rear a tad bit and I didn't have to do anything with it now I wasn't launching this thing off of jumps or anything like that um, but it felt very compliant to me which uh, which I was pleased with the motor on this thing is unbelievable it's you know people love their 300s KTM's included and this thing is I, I really wish I had better footage I was just so excited to ride at Hatfield I didn't set up my GoPro I, I should have because uh, there were some massive hill climbs and switchbacks full of rocks and nasty stuff this motor just shines the nastier the conditions the better this motor seems to perform the torque I mean I was going up some of these hills in third uh, lugging the absolute hell out of this thing and it was just going it it was like a tractor going up the stuff um, there was no hill that I was worried about conquering with this motor it was absolutely flawless as far as the torque and stuff goes I did I'm trying to think there was one hill that we all crashed on uh, it was getting dark we couldn't really see good and there was a lot of uh, jagged stone and stuff and all three of us kind of got caught off guard on that one but all the other hills uh, this thing just ate up very nicely the torque very 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 nice gearboxes smooth shifting you know I don't have a lot of miles on this thing maybe a hundred miles on it so basically it's probably not even broken yet uh, but no false neutrals shifts well clutch is perfect uh, electric starter flawless there was, I mean, there was so many times that I I would have given up probably on some of these trails had I not had the electric start. It's you need to have it in my opinion today. It's uh, it's a wonderful addition. You know, I'm used to kicking bikes, and I'll never never go back to that. This one I, you can look at it as a con or a pro, depending on uh, what you think here. But you'll notice there is a plug on the side of the case where the kicker should be they they took this out ultimately to save weight uh, so whatever I get it it would be nice to have the backup kicker um, with you know with a woods bike that's cool especially if your uh, battery dies you know it's nice to have the option of bumping it um, you can always do that but it would be easier to kick it if you put a recluse clutch in you might not be able to bump start this thing so then it's like all right well maybe i will get the kicker you can get the kit it's a couple hundred bucks you gotta uh take this side of the case off so you know water pump all this junk and i think you got to get the brake out of the way because that's you know the, it's going to hit the bottom of the case but you you can put a kicker kit kit excuse me you can install the kickstarter kit in this thing if you need it or want it I figured the hell with it if I had to I could bump it uh, I mean I don't know how I feel about that you know when was the last time you kickstarted a street bike never so you know when did you pull start you know your Polaris 1000 RZR never so I, I feel like if you're gonna be doing some real serious riding uh, next year, I'd like to go to Colorado to do some riding. I'll have my Camelback with me for water, you know, and obviously I'll also probably have a jump pack just in case. They're light enough and easy enough to store where if something happens to your battery, you can use that. The light does not run off the battery. It runs off the stator, so you don't have to worry about that. The light came in very handy when 
Yeah, it was our second day. We got caught. Uh, someone had a breakdown on a side by side, and we were trying to help fix it, but it was getting dark. Some of the other riders didn't have headlights, <clears throat> so I was the only one, and we barely made it out of. Uh, one of the trail systems because it was starting to get dusk and if i didn't have this light i probably would still be in hatfield or eaten by a bear or something i don't know but you need you need to have that in my opinion it did come with you can take this off very easy rubber straps and then there's like a peg that it kind of sits in i don't know if you can see it back there really but it does come with the regular number plate if you don't want to run the light I figure I'm leaving it on here. I want it to be visible. There's a high and low beam here. Uh, I did take off the horn. The horn was, you know, because this bike is, it comes basically street legal for the most part. You just need turn signals. But in uh, different countries, this thing's ready to go for street use. Matter of fact, the title that I have with it has a, uh, it says motorcycle. So if I wanted to, I could very easily get a street title for it uh, but the the horn I took off it was mounted down here I figured if I crashed it would just get uh, messed up the the starters on this side it's uh, it's easy to kind of bump the start button here but it's not too terrible you got to kind of be aware of that it would be nice if maybe it was placed somewhere different you can get an aftermarket uh, starter button I think uh, Rocky Mountain ATV and uh, motorcycle sells them or eBay you know anywhere um, but yeah so I like the graphics I think the bike looks pretty cool brakes were fantastic uh, yeah you really really I don't have too many bad things to say about it for the price this bike you can find them um, for high sevens uh, with tax I think I paid 8300 uh, for it and I, I felt that, you know, KTM XCW probably would be, man, I don't know, pushing 10 large, you know, 9,500. I, you know, I don't even know. And the KTMs are good bikes, too. I was considering it because of the TPI, uh, transfer port injection, the fuel injection. But, you know, carbs are still pretty easy. You've seen plenty of my videos where I've cleaned up carbs and got them back in business again. The... Uh, fuel injection advantage is it's huge honestly though you know when you're riding in higher elevations and stuff like that you don't have to worry about it and I'm sure in another four or five years most two strokes are going to have some kind of TPI uh, just because of the the um, EPA and also the Euro uh, spec over there I believe they're they're clamping down on emissions but Carb works good on this, no issues. You know, with the oil injection, you don't ever have to worry about uh, mixing stuff. For break-in purposes, I did throw a little bit of two-cycle oil in with my gas just in case. I think they recommend that in the owner's manual. Comes with a very good owner's manual too, by the way. And the, uh, the oil injection system, in my opinion, is, is really good. The, uh, you can tell it burns really clean. There isn't a lot of uh, oil and spoogey looking stuff in the back here, which was nice. And obviously it, it meters it, so it only uses as much oil as it, as it really needs. So when you're just idling around, it's, it, it, the mixture, it, there's not a lot of oil being dumped into the, the crankcase. But when you're ripping wide open, there is a throttle position sensor, and it's going to dump more oil into uh, the motor. So... One thing that I heard people having issues with, and I think you can, maybe I'll go on the other side to show you where the line is. So uh, right here is the, the oil line. It's real thin. People have been having problems with it coming out. So I put a zip tie real tight on the bottom of it to keep it there. Uh, keep it in place but that's you know really the only issue I know some people are having problems with a diode that's in the back somewhere uh, up I think it's up here somewhere they get wet and they corrode and then you have like starter issues and computer issues I think they corrected that with this model year I know my dealer said it had the better diode and you can get different ones uh, that are fully sealed if you're worried or doing a lot of wet riding. I didn't have any issues, and it was nasty as hell, full of rain. 
uh, mud and everything else at Hatfield and I didn't have a single issue. I'll probably get a pipe guard for it eventually. And that's really it. I don't think I'll do too much else to this bike. Uh, stock Excel uh, wheel set, which is nice. So yeah, I mean, if you guys have questions about it, put them down below. I'll definitely answer them for you. Overall, I'm very, very pleased with the bike. It's a little tall for me. I, I maybe might invest in getting a softer seat that's lower cut. I know Seat Concepts makes one that's, I think, about right here. So it'd be an inch lower, and that might help some of us shorter guys. I'm like five, uh, nine, maybe five ten with my boots on. Uh, so not, you know, I feel like this bike is perfect if you're six foot, um, you know, somewhere around there. Great bike, though. Love it. I feel like it's uh, a good value. It should last for a while. Um parts seem to be attainable online i'm a little disappointed in my dealer support so i'm going to call them and uh find out what the deal is with the the uh speedometer see if i can get that otherwise i've been i've been happy with everything else nothing's broken of course it's still very new but i feel like hatfield was one hell of a place to break this thing in and it did a really nice job so yeah, I, I would uh, recommend this bike for someone that is doing some enduro work and wants to have a, a just a nice, a nice, reliable, easy to use bike that, you know, like I said, that oil injection makes it super convenient. You can just fill it up with gas or, you know, if you're with your buddies and they all have four strokes and you run out of gas or something, all they have to do is dump gas in the tank. You don't have to worry about mixing it. So it's kind of cool. I like it. So thanks for Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, just put them down below. Okay, see you guys.